Hello everyone and welcome back to my series Fayar Studies of the Young Cellist. Today we are going to cover study number 47. If you are following this series of Fayar Studies of the Young Cellist and if you have done all of them then you will notice that in this number 47 there is nothing new. Okay this etude doesn't represent anything new but it is a challenging one and why is that? It's because we are focusing on many things at once left hand extensions, intonation, shiftings and also in the meantime we need to create a nice smooth legato in the right hand. At the end do you need to perform this etude next week in a concert or in a performance? No, this is just for your personal growth. Before I play through the study number 47 don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you want to see more cello related content like this one. With that said let's go. So this was study number 47, not a boring one, it's quite nice, it has a nice melody, but okay, let's go break things down. This might sound crazy to you, but in today's lesson my priority is not the left hand, my priority is the other one, the right hand. You're probably asking, why? This is a study for the left hand, it's written in the score. Yeah, sure, you are right, but I have two reasons. One, I have already so many cello tutorials about the left hand technique and they are pretty similar to this etude over here. I will link some videos in the video description below. And two, if you don't have a nice beautiful smooth sound coming out of your right hand then this will affect a lot on the study. So let's see why the sound is very important here in this study. Long story short, this is a study that I give to a lot of my advanced students and when they play this study for me during a lesson they all share the same mistake focusing and suffering too much about the left hand. Yes, of course, focusing is very important, but never in exaggeration, so don't really get obsessed with it. Because when you strive for perfection, for the perfect intonation, especially here in these Fayard studies, then you'll get a brain fog and you don't know anymore what to do. And when you don't know what to do, you lose motivation. And when you lose motivation, well, game over. So instead of worrying too much about your left hand, focus on the sound and the musical lines. Now I will show you two examples. The first example, when I will focus too much about the left hand and not much the right hand. And the second one, I will focus on the musical lines. So you will hear absolutely the difference. Let's go. Which one did you prefer? Probably the second one. And look, I'm not playing perfect, far away from that. But I try to forget what is happening in the left hand and instead I try to sing the melody. 
Intonation you can practice separately with a cold mind, no vibrato, softly, note per note, then you can connect with groups and so on, like that. And to practice intonation is not very hard, it just requires time. That's it. But there are two things that you absolutely must do when practicing intonation. First of all, do it slowly, do it softly, without vibrato. And the second thing, don't just go through. So if you hear that it's not in tune, repeat it, search for it, explore it, don't go further. Because if you go further, you don't resolve the problem. So if you need to repeat 10 times, 20 times, so be it. Before we go into the right hand, there's one last thing I want to mention here in the left hand. What kind of finger articulation do we have to use here? If you follow my other videos, I always talk about hammering the fingers, right? Here also, but here we need to have a more flowing motion with the left uh, hand. I would rather think more as a pianist than a cellist. Maybe you should imagine that you are playing Debussy, music by Debussy or music by Chopin. So very floating, very flexible, but of course with articulation in the fingers. Because also if we just go, you know, vertically like this, then it sounds like that. Then we are putting accents on every note and that's also not a point. So instead, think more as you are swimming. So a great example would be watch videos of great pianists playing Chopin or Debussy or other composers that are um, in the same style. So pay attention how they move the motions, the relaxation in the arm and so on. So then you will have something like this. Uh... So this is very important. And also the shifts, don't do them too quickly, don't do, do, do them too mechanically. Instead, take your time, sing with it. A pro tip that I give you, take the score, before even playing this on the cello, sing it. How would you sing this? Would you sing it like that? Or would you rather sing it like this? So, do you hear the difference? So this is very important. This is a nice tip that I'm giving to you. And not only in this etude you can apply this, you can apply this to any kind of music. So let's say if you're playing this one or Elegy by Faure, whatever other pieces, take the score, sing the melody in your, in your head or loudly so you can hear it and then try to find this onto your cello. So for the right hand, this etude is very easy. It's just long, slow bow pace, like that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So what is very important here is that you have to create an equal bow speed. So don't start slowly and then you speed up and then you slow down again or just the opposite. So try to do this on open strings. If you don't have the control on uh, bow speed and bow distribution and so on, do it on open strings. So like this, your left hand is away and you just focus 100% on your bow hand. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And try to find this mood of freedom. Freedom is very important when playing the cello. We are not working when playing the cello. We are enjoying, we are playing, we are creating musical lines. So if you are a beginner cellist that wants to discover this etude, then I really recommend to do it first on open strings with the rhythm of the piece. So if the piece goes like this, yam, pam, 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 two, then do it with a metronome. You put the metronome and then you just do open strings. So one, two, one, two, do it on all the strings because anyway, you will need all the strings here in this etude. If it gets too boring for you playing open strings, then you can play uh, the first note of each bow change. So in this case here, 
we start uh, so we have the C and then we have the G then we have the D A flat and this is a nice exercise also because like this you will see where the musical line goes so let's just take the first three measures so we have the first note um, So each first note of bow change, there you can play these notes. If it's also boring for you, then you can add every first note of the triple. So again, from the beginning, um, so we have them. So that would be like this. Um, And as you notice, the shifts are really gentle. So don't play them too mechanically here in this etude. Good. Then afterwards, you can try doing by groups. So you play three notes, then you stop. Uh, stop. Continue. Stop. 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 Then you focus only in this section. You do this a couple of times. First by groups of three notes, then you can do groups of six notes, like this. Um, stop. 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 And then you can play the whole thing over and over again. This way, I practice uh, it this way, so to really get familiar with everything, with the motions, with the movement, with the nose, with the intonation, with the shiftings, and so on. So I repeat again, the point of this method is so that you feel free. Freedom is everything here in this etude. The more you do it, the more you get familiar with it. And that's it for today's lesson. That's what I wanted to show you. So I gave you here a couple of tools and insights so that you can apply into your practice sessions in order to take this study to the next level. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more cello related content and free lessons like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Happy practicing.